what's up back what's up welcome back to my channel today we're gonna to be looking at crazy bone exposes the music industry sadistic plot hey i don't see any clips on youtube i don't see any clips on tiktok and instagram but i never seen the full video i mean everybody was a fan of bone throws and harmony when they first came out i know i was and i know they've seen a lot of things but this is where I look at it. I believe everything he's saying is 100% true because there's a lot of things that go on in government. There's a lot of things that go on in the different industry that we would never know about. We just fortunate enough to have these little secrets. And the reason I say little, like even as much as we know now, it's still a lot to be known. It's still a lot, a lot to be discovered. It's still a lot that people need to come out and talk about. But some of them can't because of NDAs or fear for their life or, you know, or some of them still heavily involved with a lot of these illegal behaviors and activities, so they were not exposed. But one thing I know, and I'm a firm believer in the Bible, that whatever in the dark is always going to come up, come to the light, no matter what. And it will come in ways that you least expect it. The very person that you think is down for this stuff, they eventually become convicted and expose everything. Anyway, Without further ado, let's get into this video. Right. And I read, I read an article, bro, and I was, I was like absolutely shocked. Very Talk shocked. Talk to us. Talk to us. In fact, I want to read this uh, letter. I mean, this article. It's actually a letter that was written by somebody that was a decision maker at a major label. Shot caller. And he said, you know, he was invited to a very special meeting about the future of hip hop back in 1991. Okay. So here's what he said. This is how the events went down at the meeting. Break it down, man. Okay, I just ride with me, okay, because I'm reading this. Uh, oh, this is real. Uh, hold on, wait. Let me try to. Uh, Way out article too, man. You know, what I'm saying? when he told me on telephone about this, wait till y'all hear this, G. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it's just. So, it's mesmerizing how these people do, you know what I'm saying, the plans that they got to put it down for how far they will go, you know what I'm saying, to make people, you know, actually slip in society, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so it says, oh, and the, uh, and the title of the letter is um, The Secret Meeting That Changed Rap Music and Destroyed a Generation. Damn. So it says, hello. <clears throat> After more than 20 years, I finally decided to tell the world what I witnessed in 1991 which I believe was one of the biggest turning points in popular music and ultimately American society. I have struggled for a long time weighing the pros and cons of making my story public as I was reluctant to implicate the, the individuals who were present that day. Mm. So I've simply decided to leave out the names and all the details that may risk my personal well-being and that of those who are, like me, dragged into something they weren't ready for. <clears throat> Damn. Hold on, let me uh. So we gonna tell the story. We gonna tell the story. We ain't scared. You know what I'm saying? What they gonna do? They after us, not explain. <laughs> <laughs> look, that black man. So look. So he says, between late, between the late '80s and '90s, I was what you may call a decision maker, with one of the more established companies in the music industry. I came to Europe in the early '80s and quickly established myself in the business. The industry was different back then, since technology and media weren't accessible to people like that. I'm sure all of y'all seen this video or seen the clips, but think about what he said. This is 1991. It's 2024. Think about what he said. Think about how long that is. All right, it's, like they are today. The industry had more control over the public and had the means to influence them any way it wanted. Right. This may explain why in early 1991, I was invited to attend a closed door with a small group of business, was business insiders to discuss rap music's new direction. Hmm. Rap music's new direction. Yeah. Little did I know, we would be asked to participate in one of the most unethical and destructive business practices ever seen. Crazy. So, 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 so this was the meeting. <clears throat> The meeting was held at a private residence on the outskirts of Los Angeles. 
I remember about 25 to 30 people were 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 being there. Right. Most of them familiar faces. Speaking of those I knew, we joked about the theme of the meeting, as many of us did not care for rap and failed to see the purpose of being invited to a private meeting to the get to to discuss the future of hip hop. Talk to him. Now listen when he say uh, in his article, the guy that that's apparently who wrote this little, this letter out said that he didn't, you know, he found it amusing, you know, uh, he didn't really care about rap. You made me think about um, that movie N.W.A. just came not came it came out not too long ago, and um, you had that one guy who felt like the group was hot and, and, and they need to be heard. You had like three other people that come there and listen to the lyrics. And they listened to him um, rap and perform, and three of them was like, nah, you know, they didn't want to fool with rap. They didn't want to fool with hip hop like that. You know, they thought it was too vulgar, you know, too obscene. And you had like that one or two guys that, you know, stuck behind NWA, and, you know, the rest is history, right? Um, I mean, again, it parallels to what he said. I mean, you do have some people that really don't care about rap. I mean, I'm not trying to just make it a rap thing. You have some people that really don't care about rock and pop or whatever like that. Your genre is your genre. You got some people that really don't care about gospel. Your genre is your genre, right? But it, what I'm saying is they didn't want to really touch rap for real. But I'm thinking what he's going to say is they found out that they can use this, this hip-hop music to bring money into their pockets. You know, as far as the Among the attendees was a small group of unfamiliar faces who stayed to themselves and made no attempt to socialize beyond their circle. Based on their behavior and formal appearances, they didn't seem to be from our industry. Our casual, our casual chatter was interrupted when we were asked to sign a confidentiality agreement preventing us from publicly discussing the information presented during the meeting. Mm. Needless to say, this intrigued, in some cases, disturbed many of us. The agreement was only a page long, but very clear on matters and consequences, which stated that violating the terms would result in job termination immediately. We asked several people what this meeting was about and the reason for such secrecy, but could not find anyone who had the answers for us. A few people re refused to sign and walked out. Nobody stopped them. I was tempted to follow, but but curiosity got the best of me. That's right. A man who was part of the unfamiliar group collected all the agreements from us. So now it's going to get to the good part because the meeting about to start. Talk to him, Jay. <clears throat> it says, quickly after the meeting began, hold on one second. Get your popcorn, y'all. Popcorn? Get your pistol. No, For real, um, though. <laughs> quickly after this meeting began, one of the right industry now. colleagues who shall remain nameless like everybody else thanked us for attending. He then gave the floor to a man who only introduced himself by first name and gave no other details about his personal background. I think he was the owner of the residence, but that was never confirmed. He briefly praised all of us for the success we had achieved in our industries and congratulated us for being selected as, a part, as part of this small group of decision makers. At this point, I began to feel slightly uncomfortable in the strangeness of this gathering. The subject quickly changed as the speaker went on to tell us that the respective companies we represented had invested in a very profitable industry which could become even more rewarding with our active involvement. He explained that the companies we worked for had invested millions into, millions into the All building right. of privately right. owned prisons and that our positions of influence in the music industry would actually impact the profitability of these investments. Then he says, I remember many of us in the group immediately looking at each other in awe and confusion. At the same time, I didn't know what a private prison was, but I wasn't the only one. Sure enough, someone asked this, someone asked what these prisons were and what any of this had to do with music. <clears throat> we were told that these prisons were built by privately owned companies who received funding from the government based on the number of inmates. Mm -hmm. The more inmates, the more the government would pay these prisons. Mm -hmm. 
It was also made clear to us that since these prisons are privately owned, as they become publicly traded, we'd be able to buy shares. Just imagine if everybody stopped doing crime <laughs> and stopped being influenced by this, by entertainment altogether, hip hop especially. The prison, it wouldn't be no need for prisons. These people saw the opportunity to play on people's desires that's already inherently in them. And I'm not even going to get ahead of myself. Matter of fact, I will. And they decided to influence this music. But somebody may say, well, they ain't nobody put a gun to the head to make the, the artist rap about this stuff. Nobody put a gun to the head to do do you know that there are rappers who who, who came out and they was rapping about self love and um being a community activist and actually having people together and working on the same page and building businesses and and, and it wasn't against a white and black thing. It was pretty much everybody is a, from a human standpoint. Um you know, um, can come together and, 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 and be somebody and do something together. These worker labels ain't want that play. You might have one song on an album or two with that, but then it wouldn't be your most popular song. What's the song they put out on the radio, first of all? The catchy song, the one they either talking about over-sexualizing women or a song that's talking about um, killing your brother or your sister. When I say brother or your sister, I mean to my from a human standpoint, they'll put that out there. It may take away the curse and a lot of the vulgar language, but still the message is there still, you know. And um, and mainly you will ride around listening to that song before you listen to the whole album, right? Um, but anything else that involving positivity, you know, true positivity, not this self-love stuff, this self-help stuff, this this, this stuff they put out that, that make you feel, you know, the women feel good about themselves because they, they're they single now and, and, and because they, their husband done cheated or they done cheated and girl, it's your hot girl summer type situation like that. I'm talking about true helpfulness, true um, um, positivity as far as like getting along, being along, strengthening the family unit, strengthening your friendship with whoever you're friends with not looking at this person because they white or black or, or another um ethnic group but actually getting along with them or being getting along with them or going along with them and helping them like how god god want us to be anyway they ain't pushing that out there but anyway i don't got ahead of myself i'm quite sure you're gonna mention some of these because i think one of the clips i seen that he did say this one of these most of us were taken back by this again a couple of people asked they, um, what this had to do with us this, 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 at this point my industry colleague, who had first opened the meeting, took the floor again and answered our questions. He told us that since our employees had become solid investors in this prison business, it was now in their interest to make sure that these prisons remain filled. Our job would be to help make this happen by making music which promote criminal behavior, mm. rap being the music of choice. Mm. He assured us that this would be a great situation for us because rap music was becoming an increasingly profitable market for our companies. And as employees, we'd also be able to buy stocks in these prisons. Immediately, silence came over the room. You could have heard a pin drop. Hmm. I remember looking around to make sure I wasn't dreaming and saw half of the people with dropped jaws. My days was interrupted when someone shouted, is this a fucking joke? At this point, things became chaotic. Right. Two of the men who were part of the unfamiliar group grabbed the man who shouted and, and attempted to remove him from the house. A few of us, myself included, tried to intervene. One of them pulled out a gun, put out a gun, and we all backed off. They separated us from the crowd, and all four of us was escorted outside. My industry colleague, who opened up the meeting earlier, hurried out to meet us and reminded us that we had signed an agreement and would suffer the consequences of speaking out about this publicly or even those who attended the meeting. Damn. I asked him, why was he involved with something so corrupt? And he replied, it's bigger than the music business and nothing we can do. And, oh, no, 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 it's bigger than the music business and nothing we want to challenge without risking consequences. We all protested as the as they walked, as we walked back.
into the house. I remember word for word the last the thing he said. It's out of my hands now. Just remember you signed an agreement. He then closed the door behind him. The men rushed us to our car and actually waited until we drove off the property. Damn. So, so uh, this meeting, bro. Now that's a lot for a meeting right there. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, and this person later on, he said, you know, this person actually ended up leaving the music industry after this happened. Well, a, f a few years after this, he ended up leaving the music industry. Okay. And um, he'd say he just like, you know, over the years, he just, he just felt guilty because he said as he sat back and he watched these plans come into play, come to a reality. Over two decades. He sat back and was like, wow, they really pulled it off. Yeah. They really pulled this off. He was like, they were told not to sign any more political rappers any any more rappers that had messes in their no music, positivity it was all to be gangster rap music that they promote and and the reason why the reason why that is because like i said they don't want you to uh they don't want you to love one another and I'm, I mean, I commend Crazy Bone for bringing this out and talking about this. Now, somebody may say, well, he was a part of the Bone Thugs and Harmony group, and all they did was rap about um, um, gangster rap. But some of y'all act like people can't change. Some of you act like people can eventually have a conscience and say, the stuff I was putting out in the world was actually negative. Now, can he go back and take every album out of everybody's house, every um, album off the internet? Every every um, song that he made off somebody's personal phone, no, he can't. But the thing about it is, when you when you mess up, when you do things and it's not positive, you might not can right every wrong. All you can do is come back and say I'm sorry, and then take proper steps to rectify what you've done. And this is what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing now. This video was like some years ago. I don't know what he's doing now. I don't follow him for real. Follow up on none of these rappers' lives unless I see something that come about on the internet or you know on social media but the point is people can change people can change people can change people can have a conscience and people begin to um, do things and take proper steps to make things right and this is to me this is a big step by exposing it he basically saying i'm wrong i was wrong for putting it out myself and, and, and we got to be careful when we come in like that i don't see plenty of people when, when when you they talk to people who had probably content they put out that was negative you know, just to get, you know, those subscribers and followers and they come out all of a sudden with a message that's different. First thing they want to say, well, you used to do, you used to say, you used to be, so what? People change. Do I supposed to remain the same? The same way you fell in love with me? You know, in certain aspects, you had a relationship, marriage or whatever, whatever you did to get that person to keep that person, you know. But like, you can't keep being negative all your life, bro, you know. Do we still do tours? Do he still uh, rap the music that he that he rap? I believe so. I believe he still do tours and you know that pay his bills. But what if after every tour he'd be like, hey, look, I know I've been rapping this stuff for a long time, but um, really and truly, the stuff we rapping about, this is what we experienced or what we seen. You don't have to be that way. You know what I'm saying? That'd be that'd be dope. A re, you know, a reassurance and and put out. So if you wonder where and brand newbies went, us. if you wonder where brand newbies went, where pro righteous teachers went, where public enemy went, where KRS One went, and all sorts of groups like that that was talking, yeah. about, even Queen Latifah and Moni loving those, you know, everybody. What I'm saying? It, Any, it, it, yeah, it's a back door. Yeah, anything that was harmless, fun rap, you know, anything that had a message in it, had to go. Yeah, that's you why you, if you even notice though, now yeah, you, we talk about that all the time. Even be brief with it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, those charms that came out like maybe 1988, 89, the African mm -hmm. charms, those those disap they lasted for about two years and they disappeared real quick, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, definitely, Quickly. definitely. Now, after reading all this, you know, it actually made me feel a few different ways. The first emotion I felt was shocked because I was definitely taken back by this, just knowing the level of evil that's involved by even even thinking of a plan like this. You know right. what I'm saying? The second emotion I felt was anger. Anger because it's not enough for them to exploit our culture and make all the money off of it. Mm. Because let's keep it real, the industry has never been favorable towards artists. Never. never. 
but they're going to go beyond the artist to get the artist to influence and lure in the consumer which they knew at the time were mainly minorities. Yep. In other words, keep promoting gangster rap so that the youngsters will be influenced by them, which in turn will incite them to want to act like them, and it's very and it's a very good chance they'll end up in their prison. Yeah. So they're getting paid twice. They're getting paid from the artists they sign in, and they're getting paid from the from the the people that these artists influence that goes to prison trying to be like these artists. Yeah. So they 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 making a killing a killing they're using the music business to promote their private prison business uh, if my man is right right there talking that right 1988 a man named Tom Beasley man that's the co-founder of the uh the the um the uh, the, the the corrections the corrections for California the corrections for corporation of America that's the CCA you know what I'm saying excuse my French I'm reading this thing right there real quick it's the CCA so in 1988, he founded that, and this this is in uh, straight, straight uh, concert with the same thing. So it's like the music business. You do what you do on your side, and right. over here with the correction <coughs> facilities, we're gonna do on this side because. And now in 1970, there was 500 prisons. You know what I'm saying? Only 500 prisons in the United States. D to this day, there's 1,700 prisons right now. Mm. That means big business. I'm talking about them flippled over. You know what I'm saying? If, if flipped over is a word, yeah. because they're making a lot of money off of these things per inmate. You know what I'm saying? So getting with this, with the same thing of the of the music, it all it all went hand in hand, and we just end up we just partying at the same time. So us as the artists is the tool they use. Yeah. The music is the bait, yep. and the young consumers are the prey. It's a cold wow. game. Cold game, bro. Cold you know what game. I'm then I feel sad. Sad because everything we seem to try to create. We always seem to give it away. We're always being yeah. tricked and deceived into believing that they have our best interests at hand when clearly they never have and they never will. They never will have our best interests at hand. Every it's, it's blow after blow after blow after blow. And they can't even get up. Never yeah. They always find some kind of, kind of way to scheme, take, and just... Make sure but, we stay in our prospective places. Even look how they flip it, even to the, even right now. Like right now, what we saying to a young dude that's a young rapper, he would the, the way it's set up, it would look for him to hate us because it's like, what you trying to stop my? Bitch? No, I mean, like I said, this this interview was done some years ago. Some I don't, I don't know exactly how many years ago, but he's right. It's 2024 now. It was 1991 when they when they when he wrote this when he wrote this article or when he, when they had this meeting. It's 2024 now. How much more or worse do, do you think it's God? And not just violence and keeping people in prison. Now they telling you know church and they can be opposite of what it was already uh, born to be you know um it's so many children now 17 18 15 16 were taking on um, the honey packs and and all that stuff you know things for erect erectile dysfunction right but not only not only not not because of that you know what I'm saying it, it, it because they want to do what they hear in these songs Smashing women that last longer. Um, I have a perk before six, smoking weed, uh, drinking, uh, snort cocaine, um, popping mileage, um, someone even getting into fentanyl, right? I mean, I don't think they rapping about fentanyl per se, but what I'm saying, when, when they begin to put it out, put these things out there, hey, smoke the weed, have the six, um, you know, drinking and, and, and live a life pretty much godless. Then other things begin to in, involve themselves too. You may start out snorting cocaine. You may start out having sex with women. Then all of a sudden now you dabbling and crossing over to other sexual boundaries and drug boundaries, right? So, I mean, what he's saying is this, man, look. They seen opportunity to jump on something major. We played a big part by being the consumers, by uh, buying and constantly indulging in this negativity. The artists seem how lucrative it could be. So they transformed some of their raps from being positive. I think a lot of these rappers started out wanting to have a message of positivity. 
but they seen how lucrative it would be to be pretty much toxic and influence the culture that way. And they did it. And, they, and the business is booming from that time till now. So what do we do as consumers? What do we do as people? What do we do as human beings? Do we continue to buy it? Or do we listen to it but don't act on it? Or do we just walk away from it all, all together and try to create our own music, create our own music to bring positivity into the world? Come in. Below. Business for Let of making the money. You know what I'm saying? Um, underprivileged dude that never had nothing and he's trying to get some snaps, but he's just doing this thing off of ignorance and they know that. So it's dudes like us that'll be trying to say something like this and they'll have the rapper dude looking at us like we the f like we the fool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Trying to tell trying to rain on his parade. Well we ain't trying to do nothing like that. We trying to tell y'all look here. They can one point But he's right though. How I many of um, um, a little away from all this? People in your personal life that you spoke of it, you talked to, and you seen them go in the wrong direction, and you trying to talk to them, and the first thing they say, what, 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 why are you in my business for? Why are you trying to stop me, man? I'm not trying to get that money, blah, blah, blah. Bro, it's another way. You don't got to sell those drugs. You don't got to sell your body. You don't got to do these things. Cuz, bro, Seven billion dollars a year on this private prison system. Out of the 2.2 million people that's incarcerated, you know what I'm saying, in the United States, and, and by the way, United States got more people incarcerated than anybody in the world. Mm -hmm. Out of those 2.2 2.2 people, 2.2 uh, million, 20 percent, you know what I'm saying? That that that's 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 us here. They got us caged up. Man, you know. uh some of these things we've known just by being our witnesses, you know, from from the decline, like we were just talking about, from the decline of politically conscious rappers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or anything positive just on sale these days, and they're the reason. It's not because the music is not good or these artists done got too old or they exactly. done all of a sudden forgot how to rap. Yeah. You know, it's because they want to push their agenda again. You know what I'm saying? It, go, it goes back to that agenda. They want to push their agenda we mentioned we mentioned it all the time and the reason they're trying to keep the reason they're trying to keep it a young man's game as they say yeah it's because they want to man manipulate the young artists right give them money keep them quiet whereas the older generation you know they used to we used to be like that but the difference is we've grown up we've gotten wise yep We've, we've, we've studied, you know what I'm saying? We're not going for that old bullshit y'all used to tell us, you know what I'm saying? You know, and, uh, and, and, and we're not thinking young like how we used to think, you know, like notorious and just belling without a purpose. No, yeah. no, we stopping and we thinking now. But see, that's a problem because that doesn't sell. So you're now officially washed up, but not really, but in their eyes you are because you're put because you're not pushing their agenda. Exactly, bro. That's exactly what it is. You know, bro, I know plenty of rappers from my era. <clears throat> I know plenty of rappers from my era. And even some before my and even some before me that can still hang with a lot of these rappers out today. Facts. Oh, yeah, for sure. Facts. And in my opinion, probably they may be a little bit more creative because they'll have a message in their music and they'll still make you rock with them. And a hell of a delivery here. Yeah facts yeah you know what i'm saying so but to promote these but see to promote these prisons you got to have to, to promote anything you got to have a commercial the man tom beasley you know what i'm saying the co-founder of the corporation for the prison system for america you know what i'm saying this is what he said he said they asked him how are you going to how are you going to promote this how are you going to commercialize the prison system he said you do it like you do anything else like you do real estate you promote that like you do a hamburger franchise. You promote that like like how you do a car corporation, anything like that. So that's just what the business did. Are we saying the people that go to prison don't deserve to go to prison if they did a crime? We're not saying that. What we're saying is when you start a business, now you're starting to look for customers. That's a yeah. whole other thing. You're looking for customers, and it, it, it's basically you're setting the system up yeah. so that they fail to be automatic customers. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So. 
it's 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 like a trick bag that we never get out of. What's that? What's that? And, rate? And, and, and it wasn't designed for us to get out of it. What's that rate, Craig Jack? Tell them that rate that they said they got to have a. Uh, it's in the contract for them too for the private prison oh, yeah. system. Ninety. Oh, oh. They have to have ninety percent. We we, we gonna we, we gonna get into that. We are gonna get into that. <laughs> now, now this is just mm-hmm. another. This is just another example to show that the powers that be are very very far along in advance with their agenda. Oh yeah. To, to the point to where it's completely out of our hands. I hate to say it, y'all, but we blew it. Once again, we blew it. We yeah. gave we gave up our culture only to have it flipped around and used on us as a weapon to destroy our communities and influence the young minds of our young generation in a negative way. Yeah. We were so blind that we didn't even know it. They tricked us with the money and gave us all this stuff. And you know, a lot of people, you know, forgot about the struggle. But yeah. honestly, Keeping it 100, keeping it 100 though, because I know I just said, you know, uh, 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 they flipped on us. But honestly, keeping it 100, you know, I heard, you know, like we we didn't we didn't we wasn't the ones that glamorized the street life or selling drugs. We were simply we simply told our story, right. paint, painting a picture of our struggles and where we came from and what we had to do just to be where we are today. The media glamorized it. They glamorized it. We I agree at this point and also disagree. The media did glamorize it and um with you rapping about it and making it seem cool, you glam- you glamorize it as well. I mean, they just keep it 100. And at the same time, not every rapper that rap have sold drugs and done these things. A lot of them was, were good kids. And they they had a talent and a gift and they <laughs> played around with it with some beats and bam, they're here, they're here today and they're rapping today and they're getting their money. And some of them were putting back in the community, but at the same time, not everybody did those things that they rap about. So what you doing? If you never done anything. We were simply telling stories of struggle, it. where we right. came right. from, and they turned right. it around right. and flipped right. it on us. That's how it all came about. Yeah. Real talk. No, that is real though. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, and I heard um I heard uh one of the youngsters out here, I think is that is it Joyner Lucas? I think that's his name. And he was saying that he blamed the generation. Oh you know, yeah, I seen that. He blames the generation for, for, for you know, like talking about drugs and like you know, like glorifying it. Yeah, yeah. But like I just said, bro, we use this. Hip hop was a was something totally different when it first started, and this is why you youngsters need to educate yourself on what hip hop was. This is right. why. Because we didn't glamorize a damn thing. This was our craft. This was our culture. We was telling our story. They saw it was money in it. They took it and they pimped, the fu- pimped it out. Right. They glamorized it. We were simply, like I said, telling our story. This, this is stuff we lived. They took our lives. They took our lives and made it, you know, it made it seem like to the kids, oh, But disagree. Everybody ain't do that. Do those things. What they rapped about. But I, I get what he's saying, and he's right too. You do have. You did have some people who actually had to do what they did, what they rapped about to get where they at. You know, you had some that was associates of those who actually done the stuff, and they rapped about it too. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, I'm not taking away from the message, but I think it's both parties at fault. You know. Why didn't they just say, okay, we're gonna we're not gonna rap about that stuff anyway no more. Uh, we're gonna continue to push positivity in the world, and they had to find a scapegoat or so their the, the puppet somewhere else. You know, as far as like this is something lovely. Maybe you want to try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you know, we say in a lot of our songs, this ain't what you want to do. Don't be like us. Be better than it. we doing it. Telling y'all this, so maybe you can skip this part and try another way. Yeah, and not even to denote the cat that tried to say. You know that uh, he blamed the rapper. You know what I'm saying he on the right trail, but you can't blame the puppet, bro. 
you got to blame the puppeteer. See, a puppet can't move without no strings if you ever seen a puppet show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I ain't trying to be funny about nothing like that, but that's just pretty much how this game goes. You, the puppet cannot move. It's just an empty doll right there until somebody puts, puts up and pulls those strings. So you kind of on the right trail. You're just blaming the wrong party about this. Are the MCs doing it? Yeah. That's why they hand select these dudes at 19 and 18 and 17 and 16. It's getting lower and lower. Because you know what? When you get somebody that never had no money before and you offer them a, a platform to be doing what they're doing and what they're doing right now is a bunch of ignorance. But they don't know that because a lot of cats ain't got no mothers and no fathers. You know what I'm saying? At the same time. If they got a mother, they ain't got no daddy. If they got, if they even got that. So you got these dudes who all of a sudden got a large amount of wealth and they basking in ignorance because it's all, all they day. know. And I choose to say ignorance, not stupid, because ignorant means you just ain't hip to something. You know what I'm saying? All you just day. ain't wise to the things that's going on around you. Too so tough. young cats, like my man said earlier, we ain't trying to bash nobody. We ain't upset because young dudes at 16 and 15 is jumping out of Rolls Royces or whatever. I'm, I hope for that. I want you to be flourish and have your family and stuff like that. But look at the cost that it's costing us. You might not know that, but that's why this uh, show Truth Talk is going on right now. Check it out. Corrections, Corroborations of America. Yeah. Which is known as the CCA, which is the biggest name in the private prison industry. And back in the day, I wanted to be a correction officer. Ain't that something? I mean, the pay is good, but I, I changed my mind because the prison's so overpopulated. And it less correction officers than prisoners. You might have like one or two, maybe three guards on a cell block watching what I want to say around the number. They contacted 19, 48 states 14, and offered to 20, buy 20, 40, their prisons. However, the stipulations of the deal stated that before the deal was made, Here it go. they had to ensure that the state, they had to ensure the state that they would be able to maintain a 90% prison capacity, capacity a year, meaning they had to guarantee the state that they would be able to keep the prisons full. Just a random thought. Is it a certain point in time where people are not going to jail or going to prison? And if that, well, if that at all is, times, if that's the why and cops who would be the main candidate to now, be put in, in there? You already you know, know. blacks, house, which are the majority, and Latinos. Bottom line. And we can't gloss over that number real no, quick. Ninety percent occupancy race. Hell, uh, Best Western and Holiday Inn don't got that. The Waldorf Astoria don't it's probably it's probably equivalent to the Waldorf Astoria. You know what I'm saying? Or something like that. Or or, or going to that the Ritz Carlton. Ninety yeah. percent mean that snaps. And then and then, you know, this is when you have to stop and think, like, how can they possibly ensure that they can keep the prison at a ninety percent capacity rate? What kind of devilish scheme is they plotting That's this what time? I'm talking about. It's always something, man. It's always something. Yo, and even to, now, go, even to go along with that real quick, it's a place now, it's a place in Arizona, it's a prison in Arizona that did not get the 90% occupancy rate. So what had happened, the state had to pay the private prison $3 million. Mm. And the state don't like doing that. So what the state is going to turn around and do is they're going to have, that's why they're going to, uh, you see a dude going to jail a little bit longer than he should for something that's like, damn, he went to jail that long for that? That's yeah. how they repay that back because no state wants to pay no $3 million fine or penalty that they must pay to the private system organization. Now, after, after this deal was made, after this deal was made, two months later, an anonymous email was sent out to various, but, oh. selective, but a selective few members of the music and publishing industries they gave an account of a this. secret meeting that took place where it was determined that hip hop would be manipulated to drive up privatized prison profits. Damn. That's that's the letter we just read. You know, that's the letter that we just read when you know, like you know what I'm saying, that's the same thing we just read. So we already know that ninety percent of 
we 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 already know that ninety percent of what we read, watch, and listen is controlled by only six six main media companies. Mm-hmm. We spoke about this topic on our weapons of mass destruction episode. So, so you ever notice <clears throat> you ever notice how a lot of these new rap artists come out, and before anybody has really heard of them or their music, they're already famous, star with, ready, with millions of followers and all this expensive jewelry and you like, yo, who the hell is this? Where they come from? It's because, you know, because I'm a music connoisseur. So I'm usually up on all the hot music and artists all day long, young to old. Plus yo. we do the Craylist show. We play everything from younger play music. to older. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but a lot but a lot of the young cats is coming out of nowhere. And I'm like, yo, how did they gain so how did they gain such massive attention and notoriety this fast but nobody has heard their music you know what i'm saying and that's when i and that's that's when we have to remember that the powers that be they control everything oh yeah they control the avenue So now I understand when people be talking about the industry plants, Hollywood plants, entertainment plants, you know, whether it be the music or media, movies, somebody just pop out. You never heard their name before. They just pop out and get to acting in movies that some of the bigger stars who've been, who've been in the entertainment industry for the longest have never gotten, you know, and it ain't like they just passed them up, passed the roles up. You know, take you back to Cat Williams. Uh, they take you back to Cat Williams' interview. They can't keep it in industry play type situation on that on that particular segment of uh, conversation. I mean, they already have these people hand selected on who's going to be involved and who's going to be a part of um, who's going to be in charge of entertaining us and influencing us. They do, you know, they fail to do their job. They replace them. Either they fall off real bad, or you know. They, they, you know, you see them somewhere where they're struggling or who's necessary to manufacture any celebrity yep. and create any trend at any time. Here goes some more facts. Talk to him. Time Warner, as the owner of Warner Brothers Records, among many other labels that he owned, can not only sign an artist mm-hmm. to a recording contract, but as the owner also of Entertainment Weekly yep. can see to it that the artist gets the cover front cover next week. The hell of a plug. A oh, smack dab right in the middle. That's a hell of a plug. So that means and, that means and, yeah, and yeah, that. yeah. And this is and and this is without any consideration of their music whatsoever. The artist will be an overnight star. Yep. So they're not signing these artists because they possess extreme talent. Not all of them. Some of them are very are, are talented. Yeah. But a lot of these artists, they're not signing them because they possess possess talent. They're signing a lot of these artists because they're great influencers of bullshit. Yeah. They're great influencers they're of bullshit. Excuse my language, but it's the truth. And they're running around blinded by all the diamonds and the money and the women. You know the life. Yeah. It's a cycle that just continues to seem to keep going and going and seem like it's never going to be broken. You know what? In the coldest part, they tried to even hide their names and, and put it under an umbrella called the Vanguard Group Incorporated. You know what I'm saying? But just like my man already said with the uh, with the Time Warner, they one of them, Sony and Universal. Those are the big three right there. And I'm not scared to say I'm Sony, Universal, and Time Warner. Those are the ones who have the largest share in the prison system independently for the private prison system. And, and by the way, the private prison systems, they have out of 150 million, out of 150 million inmates incarcerated throughout the U.S. Now it's up to 2.2. They house 8 percent of that. So, you know, what I'm saying 8 percent of that, you know, what I'm saying that's what they doing right now. So they're doing big business. Like I said, they're making one point seven billion dollars a year on the private prison prison system alone. And it's going yeah. to be gumming up soon. It's going to be getting up a little, the 8%, give it a couple of years, it's going to be at 20%. You know what I'm saying? Because 
the, the, the taxpayers, the, the initial plan that they had was saying, you know what, it's going to be easier on the taxpayers with the private prison system. Now, do the stats on it. The private prison system costs just as much to a taxpayer as it does to the state and the federal prisons. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, there is no, it wasn't, there is no, we did this for, it's a break on the citizens. They ain't thinking about no damn citizens, man. They thinking about the 1.7 bill a year, extra money. Plus, the last thing I'll say about this, and you don't need the last thing. We'll say, where, where'd all the, uh, the factories go and all the jobs in the United States go for all that? The United States don't uh, make nothing or manufacture nothing no more. All the factories are closing down. Look in your rural areas, Nebraska to Ohio to even places out here in California. You know where everything's being made at? Engines and toys and cars. They don't need no factories no more. They're making everything inside the prison. And not only did the money they was making from those factories and top those factories and um and things in America, that money quadrupled from the prison. From the prison system. It's crazy. So that's why all those those jobs be be all of a sudden they shut down, all of a sudden they go back overseas. Where they, they still make X amount of money. Cars and prison. all that type of stuff. Prison. In the prison. So you can pay yeah. them a zero. That, talk to them. That baby, uh, 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 that stroller you pushing your baby in. Yeah. It's made in the prison. That crib she's sleeping in. Was made, made in the, in the prison. prison. Engines for Better cars, believe, man. Not just lights. See, they got to stuck off those 1930s movies and all that where they was making license plates. They ain't just making no license plates. You so, know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, again, you know, uh, we're not discussing this topic, you know, to um, deter anybody from pursuing their dreams. Nah. Although, although I know some of y'all sitting back like, damn, like, really? Like, you know, like, yeah. Like, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's pretty much a, uh, it's pretty much a trap everywhere we go. But here's the thing, you know, um, you have to continue to live. You have to continue to push on. Yeah. You have to continue to live your life. And as long as you're not as long as you're not, you know, um, you know, uh, 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 crooked like these people is with these agendas, yeah. and you're just doing it to make an honest living, you, then you because because I, I, you know I don't I don't believe there's a there's a corporation in the world that's big that's not corrupt. I don't. You could be you could be working at McDonald's. You may not know the corrupt shit that's going on with the you know in the in the paperwork and stuff like that. But I'm sure they done stepped on a couple of necks and you know like did a little dirt right, to right. get where they want to be as well. So yeah, Ronald you, ain't got you, that perm for you nothing. You know, but 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 you can't. But that ain't to say you shouldn't go. You know, like all you youngsters, that ain't to say you need to go get a go get a part time job there because you know they, they oh they are crooked. You know what I'm saying? Everything we do, like we're we're in a system that was created crooked. Yeah. So, you know, we have to live within that system. As long as you're not letting that system rub off on you and, like, making you crooked like they are, you have to maintain, you know, because I know a lot of people going, you know, like, because I know a lot of people going to say, oh, well, why are you still in the music business then? Like, nigga, because I'm not doing what these niggas do. Like, I'm, right. I'm taking my gift and I'm using my gift for positivity regardless to what they do. Just like, just like God is allowing you know, the police and all these government officials to be in power for the time being. Time but being. He doesn't condone them being crooked and all the and all the injustice that's going on. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to be a part of that. You can just, you know I mean, he said a mouthful there too. Why do God allow these things? Why? But you don't let those things consume you. You don't let those things influence you. So like make your living, do you, and just don't be a part of that, you know what I'm saying? Because there are many artists, you know, there are many artists out here that have nothing to do with this so-called Illuminati. Everybody ain't so they so. You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't, you know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't, you know, uh, 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 everybody ain't crooked. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are certain individuals that have agendas and they're pushing them. You know, yep. but you but but you can't ball up and just start living your life like a hermit and just, you know, like just stop going out and just stop doing things. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, if that was the case, you know, 
I wouldn't be like be able to maintain in this music industry like I do. You know what I'm saying? Really though. Already knowing that we bailing against the we marching against the wind. Rough winds, heavy winds. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's pushing us back at every chance they get. You know, but we gotta keep moving forward. It's a must that we keep moving forward. We got to, and, man. And and I'm not and you know, I'm not saying this to to make people want to uprise and, you know, rebel and go marching and all nah, that because, yeah, you know, that. like, I think I told y'all before, to me, protesting and all that does nothing. They have their plan already in place. If y'all don't, like, like if y'all don't understand that this is part of Bible prophecy, it's going to happen regardless of what y'all oh, yeah. do. The wheels is in You can run order. around, we shall overcome till you can't sing no more. What's going to happen is still going to take place because yeah. it's God's plan. Yeah. It may seem messed up now, but all these things have to happen for God to roll in his plan. They have to happen. Yeah. They have to. What you're witnessing has to take place. And it's not for us to go jump up in the middle and, like, you know, try to protest. Oh, oh this is wrong because you won't win. You're not going to take the government down. Yeah, this ain't no race. It's woe. not going to happen. This ain't no race. Whoa, it ain't nothing like that. Like my man say, it ain't that. And the things all this do lead up to, you know, saying when you trust in God, we talking about some ugly things. But, you know what I'm saying? I told my man, too. I told, I, I, I told it to him because I'm reading a lot of the comments. Be careful. Y'all talking about things that, you know, a lot of people come up missing with and all that kind of stuff. And I said to my, I said to Cat, I said, you know what? I would be worried if I didn't, you know, know who God was Same through his son, Christ. You know what I'm saying? I would be nervous about these things because this is some stuff that people don't want people to listen to us. Yeah, they don't want nobody to talk about this. They want us to continue to talk about what's Cardi B doing, what are, what's Love and Hip Hop doing, and nothing. It is true. They want to be entertained. And in a lot of that state, you got to be careful when people say, be careful, be careful, because this may happen to you. Some of it come from concern. A lot of it, a lot of it will come from them trying to scare you to not talk about it because they scared themselves. I know that from my personal, from my personal experience, a lot of this stuff came out with the, you know, not doing my research on it, not telling people about it. And it was don't say that no you need you don't no no you hearing all this stuff and it ain't it ain't that you wrong it's just that they too afraid to tell the truth but who would you say to be a who how would you be a friend how would you be a friend how would you be a family member who you know whatever your relationship status with somebody nothing's wrong with those people in those that shows but they would want to twist us against those people like that not saying nothing's friends, wrong with those things but they, they want to keep us on what's going on over there no, so that we can not we can be it. ignorant and blind to what the, thus says the lord anyway, you know what i'm saying with a simple kind of plan you know so i'm not worried about my life or nothing like that we have conversation about the black van we be playing about that a little bit you know what i'm saying but it's still you know i know that it's out there those are elements that want to destroy and and come against you know what i'm saying especially young dudes like us telling this thing because we could be up here talking about some of the silliest shit that you could ever want to hear oh, but, th yeah. but those aren't the things we're talking about you know what i'm saying so hey this is what it is man i need to uh you know uh, like we always tell you on every show you know you just need to know uh we just wanted to give you information about this, you know, because I know some of y'all still want to pursue the music, but it's like I said, like, do your thing. Just don't get caught up in, it, in all this, you know, um, all this drama here, you know, um, the whole, uh, what they call it, the Illuminati thing, yeah. which is like, you know, which always has, has been propaganda to me, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you never know, man, like, when you read these things about the agenda and all these yeah. things, you know, like you can't put anything past. You can't put anything past the government for the simple fact we know what they done to have America be the world power. We know, it, it, you know, they ain't get there by passing our roses. Sure ain't. They ain't get there by passing our roses. Say, you know or saying, saying excuse me. Yeah, or saying excuse me. They got there by brutal, blunt force. Bottom line, they the crabs in the barrel. And we know this. It made it seem like try the same like our like we is the crabs in the barrel. They the ones that's gonna step over a a burial ground and build something on that. You know what I'm saying? That's, yes, indeed. It, even the stat. And the last thing I'll say with this: the thirty-six thousand two hundred ninety-nine dollars and twenty-five cents. 
That's what they're getting paid to house every 2.2 million inmates that is incarcerated in the United States. Oh, yeah. Do the math on that, man. How That's much, $94. How much them prisons go? That's $94.82 <laughs> a day on the real. They on the NASDAQ. That's something. Hey, yeah. I'd rather hey. not. If I, if I didn't. niggas better watch out. <laughs> if I didn't care, I'd rather bet on that than pork bellies. Because that's a for show shot. Prison is a for show shot. For sure. Yeah, that's not even like that's not even like playing the Nasdaq or so the uh, so or playing the uh playing the stock market. Hell, you can bet on that with you can put a uh, hundred dollars in there. It's gonna double in the next year. You're gonna have a lot more money because prisons are gonna continue to get built. That's why you see all these fires they're talking about just all of a sudden happen. Fire season. Yeah, that's making room. Cause see a tree can't grow back. It take a tree about a hundred years to grow to its full capacity or more. Check it out, y'all. Y'all, 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 um, y'all make sure y'all follow up on what we've telling y'all. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of articles online about the whole, it's, it's no secret. Yep. It's no secret, but, you know, I just wonder how come more of us don't know about this. Why? Because we've been blinded. We've been blinded. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, man, it's, it's wow. so simple. It's so simple and it's so clear what happened. We talk about it all the time. Mm. Give them money, they'll forget about the struggle. Oh, yeah. And ever since rappers have been making money, lots of money. A lot of it. The less you hear about the struggle. Hey, the dope gonna sedate you too. You know what I'm saying? The less you hear about the struggle and you know, I just want to, we just want to, you know, like, just make sure y'all understand this. Live your life at all means, but as long as you have this knowledge, as long as you have this knowledge, you you you'll be prepared and know what you're walking into. You know what I'm saying? You have to be prepared. You have to know what you're dealing with. Now is even more of a time to make sure you know the business. Make sure you know the business. Don't just get into it because you know, like you know, um, they're looking for these. They're looking to um, to keep our kids in the dark. Yeah, Man, it, it, yeah, if you think yeah. about it, everything is set up like it's really aimed and set up at the kid, at the younger generation. Start, starting with school. Yeah. Starting with school. If you think about it, parents, if you think about it from, from what? When do kids start school? Like five years old? From five to 18. Something like that. From five to 18, your children are in the hands of the government up until they're 18 because they're in school more than they're with you. By the time they come from school and do their homework and you get home from work and everybody go to sleep, they're putting in more time with your kids than you are. So they're yeah. putting in all kinds of crazy messages about who discovered America and all this bullshit. They're putting yeah. all this into their heads because they're spending more time. They designed this to where they're spending more time with, with your kids than you are. So they can yep. put their agenda in their head and your kids can come and question you from what you didn't taught them. Yeah, but daddy, they... And, my teacher said, I don't give a damn what your teacher says. Yeah. This is what I'm telling you. Like, real talk. That's yeah. how you got to get. That's eight hours a day, not even including detention. Real you talk. You know what I'm saying? That's been with your kid. Telling the truth about that. I ain't gonna say much more, but he telling the truth about that. You gotta teach your children at home. One thing I tell my kids, they're young now, kindergarten, first grade, but one thing I tell them, or I plan to tell them too, when they get older to reiterate, I guess repeat to them again. Learn what they teach you in school, you know, pass your grades, you know, excel, you know. Go to the next grade, go to college. But I always keep in mind what I told you what I teach you, what I show you. When I sit you down and we go over history, real history, we go over, um, you know, the false ideologies and things like that. Check it out, y'all. We thank y'all for joining us for another episode of Truth Talks. I hope, you know, everybody get the message and you go do this research for yourself. You know what I'm saying? We um thank the followers like my dude said earlier because y'all have really been weighing in on the... On the
listen, let me tell you something. Everything he said was true. And I believe it. Now what are you gonna do about it? A lot of this stuff we hear about, we see, we can't really do nothing about it, but know about it, right? But we can, we can pray, we can seek God, we can um, put things together in our own personal life to kind of build like a force field or infrastructure to teach our kids and teach ourselves not to be consumed, you know, not 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 running behind entertainment, you know, like sheep to a slaughter. Like you said, worrying about the real housewives, whoever else is doing what. Think for yourself. Figure out what you're going to do to better yourself. How can you be overweight? You know, Facebook, TikTok, looking at everybody else who's in shape and living their life, and you come in on it and talking about it, gossiping about it, or running your mouth about an NBA player who could shoot, who made, who scored 45 points in one game, but then you, you haven't done nothing for yourself. You haven't done anything to better yourself. You haven't giving your life to the Lord, but you want to speak on everybody else's sin and their lifestyle, you know. It's, it's crazy how we become, and we just got to figure out how not to be influenced or to let our minds be shaped into the way they want us to think, you know. But anyway, hey, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. I appreciate you guys. Hey, the goal is to get 2,000 subscribers. Help me get there, you know. Appreciate you.